in student days, we would pass on a daily basis the huge statue of St. Pius V, the Dominican Pope remembered at the Angelicum, the Dominican University. It would seem that the wearing of white in the case of the Supreme Pontiff dates from that period. To this day, the papal theologian is always a Dominican. The Dominicans were important at the time of the Counter-Reformation. They tried to stem heresy at its origin. Pius V was important on several levels. It was a time of great expansion and conquest, and the fact that he gave the Church a universal missal containing all within its pages and standardizing the liturgy of the Church throughout the world meant that at the time of missionary expansion one rite was carried all over the church. <coughs> it was compact enough to be mobile and therefore the celebrants in missionary lands had everything together. And wherever one went for centuries <coughs> one had the same rite before one. One was always at home. When a deacon, I was being taught how to celebrate, but I was being taught how to celebrate in both rites, for in our abbey we had a great continuity, and it was emphasized throughout our formation that it was the same mass, and that the hermeneutic of continuity was to be the focal point of our monastery. It was the Mass in Italy where one felt that most. It looked like the old, but it was the new. And therefore, I was brought up not with this notion of either or, but both and, and one in many forms. Something of that also was in the earlier Carthusian formation. One feels the centuries before one in calm, unhurried celebration. When it came to the application, however, of things after the Second Vatican Council, things were forced. And the problem is actually not on the level simply of the result, but of the illness within that led to it a lack of maturity and perhaps interiority. For if the celebrant and the people are listening to the interior master, there will be space for him to teach and lead. When, on the other hand, man takes over, other dynamics reign. And that is quite often the case at grassroots level today. Other dynamics. Pope John Paul II worked closely with Cardinal Ratzinger. Both had a great love for Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. And when they celebrated, things just peacefully happened. In the case of Joseph Ratzinger, his teaching well before he was Pope went very much in this line. And therefore when he became Supreme Pontiff, one saw liturgy divinely orientated and the natural interpretation of what actually the Spirit was saying to the Council Fathers and to them, to the Universal Church. 
The council fathers, of course, celebrated the old mass. There was as yet no change. And they were formed by the centuries. The problem now is that we are three generations further on and people have not been exposed to their history. And the new norm is the only one that they know. Alas. Is fecit cui protest. He did it to whom it serves. The enemy of the church hates the holy sacrifice. And he is giving now a full-blown onslaught and attack on the sacred. That's why we need to listen, not to the loudest syllables, but to the still small voice who from the host pleads for protection. For he is our God, and in his house he must reign, and not the noise of man. Oh, yes, 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 oh,